Well, welcome everyone back to the front page of MMA. We're looking to be joined today by UFC bantamweight Brian Kelleher. Uh, how are you doing, Brian? I'm doing good. How's everything going? Yeah, doing good here as well. How are you stuck inside with coronavirus? How's that all? How's that been going so far? Uh, it's been rough, man, but uh, I, I've been trying to make do with the time, you know, at home. I've been doing like training twice a day, but doing a mm. lot different kind of training, like shadow boxing, some weight training, some, uh, you know, uh, I bought an Aerodyne bike, so I've been using that and like just, I have like a pad that I've been grounding pounds, so I get creative. Yeah. I was going to ask, how how is it basically affecting your training? Do you still feel like you're getting a good level of training off your own back inside the house? You know, I feel like as far as just cardio goes, I'm always in shape. I'm always good with that aspect of things. But like as far as like pure fight training and being in like fight peak shape, it's been rough. Uh, you know, I've, I've gotten some pad work here here and there one-on-one -on -one with my coach. That's about it. I haven't had any like jujitsu, any sparring, you know, for at least like a, a month now. So, uh, yeah. but it's crazy because like, they offered me a fight because I've been tweeting and trying to get a fight because I, I want to fight, but I don't want to have to cut down to 135, you know? Yeah, that is what I was going to ask you about. You posted on Twitter about a fight with uh, Hunter Azo, who's an uh, undefeated featherweight. How do you kind of feel that matchup goes and uh, what makes him an appealing opponent? Yeah, I think it's a great matchup for me. Uh, I actually spoke directly with him because I was like, yo, like, let's do this at 145, and that's the lowest I could go right now. I'm like 160. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I can cut down to 45, and we, you know, we could do it healthy and, and get this fight going. Because I know he was uh, previously booked for this card coming up, the UFC 249. Yeah. His opponent uh, was Khabib's cousin, I believe, trying to make his debut. He pulled out of the fight. So, you know, he's looking for a short notice guy to step in, and, and I'm not guy but i'll do it at 145 so i think it's a good matchup uh, i like the style for me uh he's a good wrestler but uh he has way less experience than me so uh yeah. i think this is a chance for me to go in and uh get my momentum rolling this year and, and start off the year with two big wins so you did see you're win 160 right now uh, would you want that fight on 249 though there's going to be a lot of eyes on that or would you rather a little bit more time to make the weight cut a bit easier i'd rather a little bit more time just because, you know, at least that'll give me two weeks to kind of maybe grab a couple of guys to to finish out like a camp quick and, uh, you know, give me time to prepare a little bit better. Although, you know, I've fought 30 times, you know, professionally, so I know I, I know how to fight. So I'm not worried about that so much. It's just it's just really, uh, you know, making sure I'm going to get on weight and be able to uh, to get that done to fight. I, I'm not really worried about the fight itself because cardio wise, like I said, I'm always in shape. The reason why I'm so heavy is mainly because my my body's reacting to a different level of training. You know, I'm so used mm -hmm. to twice a day sparring, jujitsu, wrestling, like rounds on rounds. Whereas now it's like going for like three, four mile jogs, you know, doing sprint work, doing shadow boxing. I, I bought like an infrared sauna, like for my house, like just to keep the sweat going. Like it's hard to maintain yeah. weight, you know? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so I take it you've been more, um, uh disciplined than most of us have been so I know myself and even people like Darren Till being stuck indoors has led to eating a lot more kind of junk food so have you not been doing any of that? Yeah and you know what I, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you like I eat pretty clean I mean I, I'd say like 85% clean you know I have one cheat night a week like I do it in fight camp but yeah. it's it's really the level of training I notice changes my body so much like I mean usually I'm 155 you know in fight camp a healthy you know eating good clean food but eating a good amount of food for fuel um mm -hmm. and now like i've had a couple of slip ups but i haven't been like eating junk food all day every day i've been eating clean you know most a week and, and and training twice a day but the level of training is so different that i think it adds up every day every week that goes by it adds up and i, I haven't checked my weight i checked my weight like a couple of days ago just because mm -hmm. i thought i might get a, a short notice fight let me see where i'm at and i was 164 and i was like whoa like i i haven't <laughs> been that i haven't been that heavy since i was like 25 when i really wasn't treating this as a professional so i'm like you know let me see if i do a couple you know good workouts if i stop taking the creatine you know usually that that has a lot to do with it so right now i'm like 159 and I can make 145 if, they, if they're if they willing to do it. So is fighting at featherweight something that you'd planned on beforehand or is this just because of the so short notice aspect of it? 
Well, I actually had a bunch of fights at 145 before I was ever in the UFC. I've, yeah. I think I fought maybe like four times, five times at 145, and I always felt fine there. I never felt mm. like these guys were too strong or, or, or anything like that. So I know I'm good there. And plus, this guy is a bantamweight too. It's just us kind of agreeing like like Conor McGregor and uh, Cowboy did. You know, let's just fight a weight class up. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're natural 135 or so. It's really just a short notice. I was going to ask you about uh, your fight on that card, uh, UFC 246. You fought uh, Ode Osborne, who was currently on a four-fight finish streak going into that fight. Is it always sort of, is it good to be able to, not in a nasty way, is it good to put a kind of end to someone like that, who there's a lot of hype behind leading into a fight? Oh, yeah, 100%. I, I love fighting undefeated guys. I know he wasn't. He, I think he had a couple losses. Yeah. But I love fighting undefeated guys for that reason. You know, it gives me, like, a chip on my shoulder. Like, I'm going to be that that first guy to t- give them that first loss. And, uh, you know, they, they don't know what losing feels like yet. So it's like, mm-hmm. for me, I've gotten that out of the way many a times. And uh, I think that was a blessing for my career. You know, I, I know what it's like. I don't go in there with any pressure of what it's like to lose. So uh, that fight was, was great to get in because i know the ufc was booking us as if like hey we're bringing this new guy in and we're seeing where the veteran's gonna be if he's still at the top of his game or are we gonna get rid of this guy so i had mm-hmm. to i had to keep my job in that fight so is that something that you were told explicitly or is that just a kind of hunch you had that there was quite a lot of nine uh, and during that fight I, I mean, I wasn't told anything. I just knew because usually the UFC renegotiates your contract after three fights when you have mm-hmm. a four-fight deal. So yeah. my third fight ended, I lost, and they didn't come back with an offer. So I was like, wow, like they're they're really trying to see like how I fight my contract out and where I'm at. So for me, I was like, you know, there was a lot of subconscious pressure there. I tried to tune it out and just focus, which I did a great job at. But I knew for sure like – the proof is in the pudding. Like my job's on the line. Three losses usually are out. So, mm. well, I just spoke to uh, two days ago. I spoke to Jose Torres, who was a flyweight in the UFC. Yeah, and he uh, he feels like kind of the smaller weight classes, especially, don't get a good treatment. I'm not asking you to talk bad about the UFC or anything, but is that something you had to back your head, knowing that in America predominantly fans are more uh, likely to tune into heavier guys fighting? Is that kind of something you think about? Knowing that you're a smaller guy, you need to put on maybe a bit more of a show to get the same sort of reception from fans. Um, you know that's a good question. I don't, I don't, I don't really feel like that myself. I, I feel like the the smaller guys have more exciting styles, in my mm. opinion. I mean. I, I'm a smaller guy, so I mean, people could say I'm biased, but I truly like watching like the the smaller guys fight. You know, not just because I'm a smaller guy, but more because just as a fan of the sport, like you see a lot more technique, you see a lot yeah. more speed, and it's uh, I feel like it's it's harder to win. You know, because we don't have that one punch where if you catch someone, it's always going to be over. So you have to you know go to war for three rounds a lot of the time. So I think there's a lot of aspects that favor uh, the excitement for smaller guys and uh me personally i i truly believe the ufc likes me they like my style they like my personality i think they've given me good fights to build my name uh Mm -hmm. opportunities you know and i think uh i've gotten three bonuses you know so far in my career so you know i i don't feel any kind of like negative way towards the ufc with with my weight class so i you know i I think that's just individually everyone's treated a little different Mm -hmm. so um you do say that you feel like you've got kind of the UFC do like you is a lot of people prioritize it in different ways but would you like to be sort of someone that the UFC really obviously the answer seems like yes but it's the sort of person the UFC will get behind and really push to make a sort of mainstream star or are you happy just fighting the kind of best guys and just doing your thing really are you bothered with the fame aspect of it yeah, I mean, you know, I would like to be that guy. I don't mm-hmm. I don't really foresee that happening because it probably would have already happened. I, I honestly think that, you know, maybe had I beat John Lineker, like things would have been different. Like they might have jumped on board and really pushed me right there. But mm-hmm. you got to win fights. You know, that's the bottom line. So for me, like right now, I'm just focused on winning fights. But uh, part of the reason why I call out Sean O'Malley a lot is because I know that he's that guy that the UFC is behind that yeah. they see as a future champion and a, and a super star so for me one way to get that back is to beat a guy like that if i could beat a guy like that maybe they'll jump on board behind me again and say hey keller is 33 but he's like he's still sharp you know he's still in the prime of his career let's get behind him now i'd say that seems like a a very reasonable call out because i mean 
although Sean O'Malley does look really good, he's not really faced anyone yet who's got a lot of like experience and being a high level fight. So I say you come through the next one. That seems like a, a decent fight to make, to be honest. Um, but a bit of a random question: How is it that you first uh, got yourself into the sport of MMA? Uh, what age did you kind of realise that that's where you wanted to go uh, for a job, really? Yeah, uh, I was about like 18, 19 years old. I remember just being a fan, you know, just watching like Chuck Liddell and, and Matt yeah. Hughes and BJ Penn, those guys doing their thing. And uh, I was just so intrigued by the sport. You know, it's kind of a funny thing because I never really was like a street fighter type kid. I ne- I was always very disconfrontational, stay away from fighting. Uh, but I always played sports. I-, I was always like a natural athlete, you know, gifted, talented, you know, as a young kid. I remember feeling like I, I was five years old. I started playing playing soccer like I felt like I stood out from the rest you know like I had these skills and this talent I don't know where it came from but I I took off with it and I really put a lot of work in every other sport you know soccer hockey baseball just playing sports with my friends growing up and then uh being very competitive having that fire inside me to win I knew I had that so once I found MMA I just said, hey, let's give it a try. I used to mess around with my friends, kind of wrestle around. I would do really well with, like, my bigger, stronger friends. Like, oh, okay, like, I'm strong. You know, I can hold my own. So uh, a gym opened up. It was, like, perfect timing. A gym opened up, like, the town over from me right as I was getting into the sport as a fan. And uh, I was like, man, I'm going to go check out this gym and see what happens. And, like, we went to this gym. We started training, getting into it. And, like, two months later, I took my first amateur fight. I kind of got rushed into it. These guys were like – these coaches were like, hey, let's get fights for you guys. Let's do this. They were excited, too. They were new with the sport. So we're like, yeah, why not? Let's try it out. So I won my first amateur fight by TKO. And that was like, that was it. I was hooked right there. I was like, I'm going to keep doing this and see where it goes. Yeah, that sounds good. Because I'm kind of just starting to train at the moment. And most people around me that I've spoke to, it's like a year and a half, two years before they even get a chance to actually test themselves in a fight. So I would love to be able to try it out after two months. That sounds like a fun experience. That was yeah, man, as long as you got good coaching and, and you got yeah. training partners and you believe in yourself, man, you go out and, and test yourself and see how it goes. I mean, amateur, that's what it's for. It's for growth, you know, and mm-hmm. for uh, seeing, finding yourself as a fighter, seeing where you're at. Because once you go pro, it's it's all wiped away anyways. It was all just experience. Definitely. Um, on a kind of another topic, I know you like music and you've posted many videos of yourself kind of rapping and things on Twitter. You've seen Tyron Woodley, he's took it a bit serious, made videos and things, but there's been, safe to say, a mixed reception from fans uh, online and stuff. Have you ever considered taking it maybe more seriously, making a few songs, like music videos and that sort of thing? Is that something you want to do at some point? Yeah, yeah, I love music, man. I actually, I have a bunch of songs I made. I send them to my producer, like he mixes and masters the songs. I have like... 10 to 15 songs done i don't really know i, I kind of want to make more music to release an official project you know a mixtape or, or an album like that mm-hmm. but uh i just uh w- right now actually with the quarantine stuff like it's given me more time to focus on music uh usually i'm so focused on the fighting uh which takes over my life so i kind of l- lack you know putting in the time for music because it takes a lot of effort to really make a good song these days so many people are making music like it's hard to stand out amongst the rest so Mm. for me i just do it as a hobby but i think i do have some talent with music as well growing up around you know my dad sings plays guitar my grandpa played the trumpet and we all kind of got into music like that so singing rapping is definitely therapeutic for me and something i i feel i could take further uh it's really about just making the right connections you know so i've been trying to reach out and get my music out there as much as possible so who would you see your sort of inspirations when it comes to music when you sort of comes to making rap music and things like that and singing who is it you sort of listen to and try and sort of emulate i suppose you could say yeah i mean i i really don't want to copy anybody because like, you kind of want to have your own little thing going same thing yeah. with fighting with your personality but influences yeah there's been many uh like russ you know on on the hip-hop side of things like russ khalid uh little wayne was like the big superstar when i was growing up as a kid and then drake came along and i feel like drake makes a hit like every song he makes is good so Mm -hmm. you know those are the kind of guys that i looked up to and and, and stylistically with hip-hop and everything and then now like i'm not so much into the new school rap i feel like it's it's not as good it's just a little bit different and uh you know but the new guys that do stand out to me are like uh, kendrick lamar j cole uh i like big sean um drake of course but more so for like hip-hop style um but yeah so many artists out there man it's hard to kind of pinpoint one or two but yeah those guys definitely 
Uh, when, it, when it comes to making a song, what's the sort of process like? Because I know people like Eminem, they'll be sitting in a restaurant and they'll think of a lyric and they'll just write it down somewhere and do things like that. How's, how do you do the sort of song making process and get your lyrics done? Yeah, you know, that's a good question. I actually, I asked Russ one time on one of his live on Instagram, I was like, what do you do when you're not making music? And his answer was making music because like he says, no matter what, he's always thinking about like how to put some kind of life experience to a song. So Mm -hmm. he could be in a restaurant, like you said, and like some kind of sound goes off in the background and he's thinking of ways to like apply that to his production and how he might put a beat together when he gets back to his place. So like I I thought that was really cool and that's like real professional way to approach it um with me i'm not that deep into music where yeah. i feel like that's happening that's more like fighting for me i'm thinking of like combinations in my sleep <laughs> but uh with music i feel like i kind of just sit down i i go through beats on youtube see what gives me that feeling like this is the one like i'm gonna write to this i like this flow this this speed this vibe and i'll just start writing you know like free freestyle just whatever comes to mind and i'll try to kind of stay on topic if i can with what i start with and just go from there so basically the first step for you is just finding it's finding a beat you can then use that to kind of base everything else off kind of get the vibe the atmosphere from that song and then take it from there yeah i like to improvise i like to create and so like once i get a beat where i'm starting to feel it i'm like okay um you know Right now, I could I could write a little bit. I could start to you know create in my head like what kind of sound I want, what kind of uh, flow that I want to to that beat, and then I'll start from there. And then you know once I get the rap side down, now I'll be like, okay, like where's this chorus part hit, and how yeah. do I want to sing and stuff like that. So it's it's really fun to just get creative with it. So basically, the music aspect maybe something that we see more from you, kind of further down the line. Maybe when MMA is starting to slow down a bit and you've got some more free time in your hands, you might look at music a bit more. Yes, exactly. Or like for me, like right after I fight is a good time to like start to kind of direct my focus to music a little because, you know, I'm, I'm recovering from whatever yeah. damage. I'm resting. I'm, I'm enjoying my free time a little bit more. It's not so selfish. Like I got to train now. I got to eat now. I got to do, you know, so, um, you know, then I have a little bit more free with my time. So that helps. But uh, yeah, as soon as, you know, fighting's done, um, doors open for any, any, any opportunity. Sorry. Someone's calling no, me okay. up As long as it's not my manager for a fight, I don't got to answer <laughs> it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, once, once fighting's over, I have, you know, I want to have opportunities already kind of developed. I don't want to wait till it's all said and done and then I start something. That's why I'm yeah, kind of sure. already started with music. So that way I'm already, I got my foot in the door, you know, eventually by the time fighting's done. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, kind of switching, I know usually I like to have my questions kind of all follow a nice little pattern, but it's been far more conversational here. So I'm kind of jump, bump, jumping all over the place. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Back to UFC 249, just, you don't you don't opinion do you think that fight should be going ahead what's, what's your plan as a fighter um on the ufc and dana white in particular still want to pump out these fights even though all these quarantine rules are in place yeah i have two sides of me that i kind of you know as the fighter uh i want i i really i'm i'm selfishly wanting to see some entertainment myself i love watching yeah. fights i miss it um I think Dana White has that ego a little bit where he's stubborn. He doesn't want to, you know, succumb to the, uh, you know, the virus and and whatever. He doesn't want to follow the rules and what everyone else is doing. So I think he's trying to be, you know, stand out and be that guy that's a hero. That's like, listen, I'm going to fight through this and I'm going to set the bar high for other sports to come back and be able to set events up. And I think he's obviously taking as much precaution as he can. Mm -hmm. Who knows if it's really that safe or if he's really following every you know protocol that is necessary i know they said that they're going to be testing fighters for the virus you know before they go into this event i hope i hope they're testing everybody you know people yeah. cameramen uh media members everybody that goes on this island or california where the fights are going to be for 249 so if everything's you know safe as can be and you know they're trying to isolate the people as as best as possible i'm all for it you know and i think you know fighters have good immune systems in general most of us are younger healthier beings uh, as long as we're not coming in contact with other people as much then i think it should be all right so how do you think the main event uh, of that goes with gaethje stepping in late uh, against ferguson how, how do you see it playing out 
Man, I like the fight. I think it's even actually more exciting of a fight than uh, Ferguson Khabib. I, I, mm-hmm. Of course, I would have rather seen that fight because of the stakes yeah. and the you know the records and everything and how many times it was booked. But with this fight, uh, I'm interested to see if any wrestling is involved. I don't think it will be. I think it'll mm-hmm. be mostly standing and chaotic. But uh, I think that uh, you know Ferguson. You got to always watch out for the elbows and the funky style and tricks that he throws. You know if he cuts up Gaethje, it could be a doctor stoppage. That's always a potential. Uh, I do think Gaethje has a good advantage early on to knock uh, Ferguson out. Uh, one of the fights that I went back and looked at was the Pettis fight. You know Ferguson was hit a lot in that fight. He yeah. got rocked a couple times, and I think Gaethje has more power than Pettis and a little bit more uh, precision with that power. You know I think he's become more calculated as a fighter. He slowed his stuff down a little bit. He doesn't just go in and brawl. So, uh, you know, a lot of people think it's a real short notice fight for Gaethje, but I think that the UFC told him maybe probably a month, two months ago, like, listen, be ready in case something goes down. And he probably has been training more than we think. And so, uh, you know, with that said, it's 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 really intriguing to me. Uh, I, I give Ferguson the edge as far as if the fight goes the distance. I think Ferguson would get the decision if that's the case. A little bit more activity, a little bit more flashy stuff, landing, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, I think if Ferguson's smart, he actually tries to utilize some wrestling. We've never seen Gaethje... Uh, his jujitsu game tested with him on his back yeah. or any, anything like that. So I really would like to see that. But uh, I'm picking Ferguson by decision in, in this fight. Decision? That's, I'm not yeah. seeing anyone yet pick for it to go the whole distance. That's, uh, yeah. that's an interesting yeah. one. Yeah, I yeah. think so, because I think it's going to stay standing. And, like, we've never seen Ferguson put out or anything. So it's like, can he be knocked out? What You know, does he withstand a couple of hard shots? And then Gaethje kind of fades. And then Ferguson is, you know, uh, putting it on him for the later rounds. That's what I see happening. But uh, decision's risky, because Ferguson will probably be cutting him up bad. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, there's two questions that I always ask any fighter that I get on. It's kind of just random, kind of a bit more fun ones. Uh, if you could... Uh, test your skills against any fighter past present when it comes to weight classes maybe one or two above your own who would you like to go up against um actually you know like Khabib would probably be one guy because I would like to just feel what these guys are feeling when they're Mm -hmm. in there with this guy because you know what he's gonna do but he does it to everyone the highest level of fighters he still does it to so I want to know what the hell that feels like and if I can get up and get out of it and prevent it that would be like one of the toughest tests in my, in my career if I had to deal with that yeah it's quite he's got kind of a freakish power because I remember all I think about when it comes to huge grappling is in the Dustin Poirier fight when oh yeah uh, Poirier at the end of a round shouted back to his corner I can't get him off me like <laughs> I can't yeah get this guy he, off he me. was like I don't know what to do like I can't get this guy off of me you know <laughs> and like for me like I one of my strengths has always been like getting up if I get taken down like I've never really been held down in a fight before and I've had so many fights so I'm like man I wonder what that's like like that must be demoralizing being like you know I can't get out of here like I'm stuck mm-hmm. like I gotta I gotta you know figure out a way to prevent this. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other fight, not that fight, the other question I ask people is, um, you don't have to name names, but what's one funny uh, weight cut story you've seen either from yourself or from someone in the gym? A kind of funny or just interesting weight cut story? A weight cut story? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have one for myself back in the days, but when I was on the regional scene fighting for Ring of Combat, uh, I remember I was like having trouble with the weight cut and at back then I feel like I didn't have the right system down. I wasn't doing it as smart. And I remember being in the sauna and uh, like, you know, you want to just get out of there. And I remember like my dad and like my, my coaches were like holding the door shut and I was just pounding the door, like yelling, like, <laughs> you're, like, let, like, let me out of here. Like, what the fuck? And I was like cursing and shit. And they're like just screaming. Like I was getting so pissed off cutting weight and I wasn't like, I wasn't like dying or anything. So I'm not yeah. saying they're trying to kill me. But like I was, <laughs> I was frustrated. I wanted a break, you know. I just wanted to get out of there for a couple minutes, mm-hmm. and uh, they were holding the doors, and I was just yelling and shit. And I had my dad in there, like massaging my neck and like trying to calm me down and, and relax. And like that's just one of my funny stories. So, was that running through your head? Like, oh my god, I'm I'm stuck in this sauna. Like, <laughs> I hope I'm yeah, okay. because I had like I had used the sauna like a lot back then when I would cut weight and now it's like I kind of work it off gradually and then I use the bath and and I use the infrared sauna like the box sauna where your head's out so it's not as bad nowadays 
But back then, it's like you torture yourself in the sauna, and it's like when you're cutting weight, you get like these crazy emotions where, like, you know, normally you're not like that, but this is like life or death, and you're like, feel like you're kind of dying, and you're like, man, like I could cry right now. I'm like so, so, uh, like all out of sorts, you know, mentally and stuff, doing the the weight cuts. Yeah, it doesn't sound doesn't sound like the most fun to be honest. Um, nah, it's not a good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, that's kind of all I've got planned for you. So, um. If you do get a fight book the next couple of weeks, then best of luck. Uh, and then I hope to get you on again afterwards if you don't for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I appreciate the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, let, let's get it done. Uh, if I get a fight, you know, we'll get back and we'll talk again. Yeah, definitely. Well, anyway, thanks for coming on and hope you stay safe. All right, you too, man. Have a good one.